The world of AR is here, and uh, it has a bit of an Eric Morkham vibe to it, or at least it does in the case of these Xreal Air AR glasses. Now, at time of recording, we're less than two weeks away from Apple's annual developer conference, WWDC, where it is widely rumoured that we'll see Apple's new AR glasses. So I'm guessing interest in this topic and the alternative products that are available on the market will probably be quite high. Now, these uh, Xreal Air glasses retail at $379, and Xreal are claiming that they are the world's best-selling consumer AR glasses. So we'd better see what they can do. I don't know how accurate that particular claim is, as I can't see any source data to back it up. And I do know that this particular product has only just been rebranded from Enreal, so make up your own mind on that. But uh, Xreal are claiming four different modes for this product on their website. We've got air casting, spatial display, virtual desktop, and AR space. And some of these functions require software apps or an additional hardware device called Beam which isn't out yet. So we will take a look at those that we can look at, uh, but first let me give you a run through of the hardware itself. Now the glasses have got a, a small display above each eye and that reflects onto these lenses here. Let me hold those up to the overhead camera. And that gives you the effect of having your computer screen in front of you while still allowing you some vision of your environment. And they also supply this uh, snap-on cover here, which allows you to block out the light for a more immersive experience. Now I'll come back to how that works in a moment, but I have to say the glasses feel well-built and decently robust, and these arms have enough flexibility to fit the majority of heads. You've also got three separate uh, angle adjustments as well on the arms, so that you can find a comfortable position. On the underside of the glasses, we've got a brightness up and down control, and there's also a button to switch off the display. And there's even a speaker in each arm behind these uh, little grills here. Now, obviously, you're not going to get huge bass response from something of this size, but they are decently loud and clear speakers. And in the box, we get three different nose pieces here to allow you to get a comfortable fit. The nose piece is removed using the included black pick. Let me show you. So taking the black pick, we just uh, insert it above the nose piece. There we go. And it pops straight out. And popping the nose piece back in is pretty simple as well, just snaps straight in. Now, if you did end up losing this uh, black pick here, then a simple cheap guitar pick would also do the job. Now, there is also this uh, prescription lens attachment in the box. You can order prescription lenses from official partners in the US, EU, and Japan. And I'm guessing you then swap those lenses onto this adapter by changing out these little screws here. Uh, Xreal believe this is a better approach than using a manual diopter adjustment. I don't wear prescription glasses, so I can't comment on that. And we've got this uh, nice carrying case, which can fit the included USB-C cable, which you will need. It plugs into the end of one of the arms here, and the plug is nicely shaped so that the cable runs behind your ear. There's no battery in these glasses, they're powered via USB-C, and as far as I can tell there's no significant processing power in the glasses either. That's all provided by software on your device or by that beam accessory. And obviously, that also means that there's no true wireless mode either. You've always got to have this cable plugged in. And you can either plug it directly into your device or you plug it into that beam accessory. Now let's just talk about those different modes. Uh, when you plug these glasses into a device, they behave like a USB-C monitor with a resolution of 1080p. Let's just do that now with the Steam Deck that I've got here. So the Steam Deck recognises the glasses. I'll pop them on and I'm now looking at my Steam Deck display. It's quite difficult to show you these glasses actually working, because uh, as soon as you take them off your head, there's a, an infrared sensor here that switches the glasses off. So let me just try and hold that, and I'll then try and hold it up to the camera and see whether or not you can see anything. It's a very difficult product to film, of course. Now this virtual display that you see sits in front of your eyes and there's no AR functionality in this mode. So if you move your head around, the display is always locked in front of you wherever you go. Now I've tried this out on the iPad, the MacBook and the Steam Deck and it does work absolutely fine. It's supposed to work with any device that has USB-C video output. So it should also be fine with Windows laptops and Android devices. And Xreal has a list of compatible Android phones on its website. Now it doesn't work via a direct USB-C connection to the Nintendo Switch, 
and that's probably more because Nintendo are doing something proprietary than any failure of the glasses. Uh, and in fairness, it does say on Xreal's website that you'll need that beam adapter for iPhone, Xbox, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. So it might not work with every device out of the box. A wireless casting to the beam device will be possible, but as this isn't out yet, I've not been able to test it. So I also can't test the spatial display mode, which allows you to shrink the size of your virtual display and move it over to the side of your vision. And this would presumably allow you to watch some video content whilst you are walking around. The website also seems to indicate that there is a stability mode to smooth out image shake with that. And I think you'll definitely need that image stabilization as I found out with the next mode, virtual desktop. Now at time of recording, this is only available on an M1 or M2 based Apple computer. It is supposedly coming to Windows devices, but I suspect it will rely on machine learning capabilities, either within your CPU or your GPU. And I'm guessing that's why it's available for Apple's M chips, because they have those capabilities. And it does seem that the processing is happening in software, not in any hardware within the glasses. You have to download the Nebula app to use this functionality. And we should say in all fairness that this is in beta at the moment, so there could be improvements coming. Once I installed the app on my Mac and connected the glasses, it started up a firmware update, which failed part way through. And I can't see any option to retry the update. And when we installed the app on a different Mac, it never prompted us to update. So just bear that in mind, because it's possible that our experience has been compromised as a result of that. So the idea of this particular mode is that you can have one, two, or three virtual desktops arranged in front and around you. Now you control this from the app, and you can also control how far away the displays appear and their zoom level. You can also change the angle at which the displays are arranged. In practice, this is fairly difficult to use. And I'm perhaps not the best person to test this as I find VR type experiences make me feel queasy. So I also asked Ben to test it because he plays VR all the time, but we both agreed that at the moment it's not a great experience. Remember that the glasses behave like a 1080p display when they're not doing AR. And trying to put two or three displays in front of you in a 1080p resolution, well, it makes things difficult to see. It does make more sense when you zoom in, but then you have to move your head around quite a bit to be able to look at the displays. And remember that we mentioned stabilization. Uh, these glasses obviously have some sort of gyro in them which is sending data to the computer, but if you knock the glasses, the image wobbles around. And when you're in this AR mode, we also notice that the image flickers. It's like a low refresh rate display. And it didn't do that in the standard air casting mode, so perhaps that is something that will get fixed. At the moment though, it makes it a hard no for me because it's just not good for your eyes to be looking at a flickering display. And I think the resolution of these glasses just isn't enough for AR use. You really need a much wider canvas so that your peripheral vision is adequately covered. In the virtual desktop mode, if you have just a single desktop in view, you've got to be really careful not to move your head too much because then part of the screen will be getting cut off. And you also get no control of where the displays are in relation to your physical environment. AR should allow you to specify where you put things. So for example, you could say, I want to have a TV on my living room wall at this position and this size, and then your AR experience should lock that in place. But this feels more like a VR experience. And the AR space mode, that also looks a lot like a typical VR experience. And this is again powered by an app, and it's Android only at the moment. It is a cool idea, but it does suffer from the same limitations as the virtual desktop mode. Whether these are hardware limitations or whether they can be fixed in software, I don't know. And I think it is perhaps unfair to judge a product that is in beta, but Xreal are selling these glasses right now. And for me, they're just not quite there when it comes to AR or VR. Let's just come back to the standard air casting mode, because I think generally this works pretty well. I enjoyed using it with my Steam Deck. Although I have to say that my son Ben tried it and he's more used to using VR and he didn't like the experience quite so much. And I guess it does take a little bit of getting used to that idea of the screen being kind of locked to wherever you're looking because of course that's not how we normally view screens and it's not how VR works. I found it pretty easy to adjust to though and I've enjoyed the experience. And actually I can see a bit of a use case for these glasses. I like to game before I go to sleep sometimes, but that's not so great for my wife. So being able to pop these on means less screen brightness to keep her awake. And then that also got me thinking about battery life in the Steam Deck. Now surely the little displays in these glasses use less power than running the Steam Deck's internal display. So could you use these glasses to extend your mobile gaming time? 
We did a quick, not very scientific test to see how quickly the Steam Deck was draining its battery, both with and without the glasses, and sadly it seems like the glasses actually use more power. On the plus side though, they are decently bright. 400 nits is what x -Real advertise, and that's just about enough to be able to see outdoors, thanks to the uh, tinted glasses on the front here. But of course you can use the snap-on cover for even better results in really bright environments. And that cover does help to make your content appear really vibrant. But because these are glasses and not a headset, you can still see things in the periphery of your vision, which may not be a bad thing. But there is a bit of a challenge with this design. Bright objects below you will reflect on these internal lenses. So if, like me, you're sat at a white desk and you're looking at something dark on the virtual display, you will see those reflections, and that can be a bit frustrating. But if you're in the right kind of space, I found I quite enjoyed the experience with the standard air casting mode. The AR modes, though, need a little more work, and it may be that this generation of hardware needs to be improved upon before those modes will get better. I will give the glasses a try again in a few months' time, just to see if those software improvements have changed anything, uh, and if they do, then I'll report back. I do think the x Air offer a decent build quality. They feel fairly premium. I like what x has done with the packaging and the carry case as well. And I really hope that they develop these glasses a little bit more. Uh, if nothing else, they have changed my view of AR. Uh, previously, I didn't think it would be of any interest to me at all, but it has uh, opened my eyes to the possibilities. And I think there are some folks out there who'll be happy with the features that these x Air glasses provide, and will probably see a use case for these. Now, there are some links in the description, by the way, if you want to snag yourself a pair and support the channel in the process. But I'm interested to know, what do you think about AR generally? Would you be interested in a product like this? Do you think AR has a solid future, or is it going to be something of a short-lived gimmick? I am very interested to read what you have to say in the comments section, as always. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the channel by subscribing and ringing the bell, and by giving this video a like or a dislike. And I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.